Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again today. 12 by 12 inch canvas, far off, like deep woods, autumn, fall sort of setting. Little cabin over here, super thick textured bushes. Uh, this big old kind of branchy tree kind of growing out right in our faces. And we use yellow and brown in the sky. And I'm sure you've not used yellow and brown. So if you wanna, you know, take a chance and paint something new, this is the perfect painting for you. You can check out the description down below with all the colors that we used, all the brushes. If you don't have the colors, you can very easily order them. Uh, go to my website, happylittlelandscapes.com. You'll find the Amazon storefront link that has, you know, every single thing that I use from the easel to the canvas to the paints to the palette to the cleaning solution, all the brushes, the Bob Ross liquid white, the liquid black, liquid clear, everything that you need in order to paint a painting just like me, right? And we're gonna get started because we always just ramble on too much and I'm sure you guys just scroll through all my talking until we get to the painting, right? So we're gonna do it in one and two and Hey guys, back again today. Doing an Amazon Live, uh, we're going on YouTube. Gonna remind people that, uh, what's it, Sunday we're going live. We go live every Sundays on YouTube and Facebook, facebook.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Today we're gonna paint a 12 by 12 inch canvas. And I'm thinking we're gonna do like an autumn, like a yellowy brownish autumn scene. So we'll see what it looks like when we get done. We never know what it looks like until we actually get there. And that's the fun about painting with Josh, right? You never know what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna go a little bit of our Indian yellow. We've got the Bob Ross colors today uh, and a few Magic Fly colors, this Gamblin 1980 paint. We've got all the paints that we have here. Uh, you can find our palette the easel, the canvas, all the brushes, all the paints, and everything we use on amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Also check out happylittlelandscapes.com. That's your one stop shop for every site that I have, right? YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, the Amazon store, everything at uh, happylittlelandscapes.com. Okay, we're gonna go. We've got the Gamblin 1980 uh, Burnt Sienna, Bob Ross Sap Green, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White, Bright Red, Indian Yellow, Yellow Ochre, and then the Magic Fly we have uh, Magenta and Lavender, okay? Going to go into our Indian Yellow, just to kind of make this nice bright area over here. Don't need a whole lot of paint to do a, a painting like this. The thicker your paint is, the longer it's going to take to dry, right? People always go, oh, well, how long does it take for an oil painting to dry? Well, it depends on how well you blended it out and, uh, you know, how thick your paint was on the canvas. To start, first, always almost forgot, uh, Bob Ross Liquid White, which you can find at Amazon.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art. And that helps these thick oil pens, paints to blend. Okay, we're going to throw a little bit of that in there. A little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow. You can even put some titanium white right down in here. Make this little bright area. Maybe the sun's setting back there. Again, we never really know what we're going to paint with Josh, so it's always a, a surprise, even to me, what we're going to paint. Now we're going to go into our, our uh, burnt sienna brown color, right? You're like, what do you mean brown? We're going to put the brown up into the sky, okay? Just in different areas. You're like, Josh, what, brown in the sky? What are you talking about? Trust me, brown in the sky looks really neat when you've got this yellow ochre with it. Almost like they just blend into nothing, into this same color, right? A little bit more brown. We're just going to blend those in back and forth, crisscross strokes, just like in fat, you know, like this, but in fast motion. And we're going to go a little bit of that midnight black for the top of the canvas and really give us this nice kind of dramatic, stormy looking fall colored sky, right? Autumn colored. A little bit of the black, kind of mix it in there. Bring it down on an angle until it's all blended together. And we've got this, hello. <laughs> I need to go to Amazon.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art and grab me a new easel since mine is broken. Almost had a mess there, right? That'll be part of the bloopers. You know, again, never know what's going to happen when we paint with Josh, right? You get a little bit more brown up in the sky up here. And just mix in with that black. Bring it down into the yellow. And we got this really cool blended sky. You can go back and forth across the whole thing. Drop some of that color down around the bottom down here. Make sure we finish our sides, because we always, always got to finish the sides, guys. Get in your guys' way for just a second. Always got to finish the sides. You never know if your buyer's going to buy your painting, if they're going to hang it coming down the stairs, 
or if they're going to buy a frame for it. So always finish the edges, and that way you've got this completed piece and it doesn't look unfinished. <clears throat> Take a little bit more of that white, just throw it right in here, we'll get this bright area. Right in there. And again, we're going to mix it up, blend it around, make sure it stays on the easel this time. Just go across the whole thing back and forth, okay? Now we've got this kind of sunsetty fall kind of colored sky back there. <clears throat> Only going to use a, free, a few brushes and a few tools today. You don't need a lot of paint when you paint with Josh. And a lot of times you don't even need a lot of, uh, of brushes. Okay, we're going to come in with our midnight black, maybe some of that crimson. We're just going to kind of chisel the edge down just like this on the knife, just by taking it and wiggling it down flattening out all those bristles till we got this knife-like edge on the edge of our knife right here. And then we'll throw some clouds in. Let's go back. You can make your clouds whatever shape you want them to be. They don't have to connect. They don't have to look like my clouds. They don't have to do anything, right? Then we got a far off little floater lives way back in here. Maybe another one. Just real far off in the distance and this is our big kind of focal cloud. We're going to come in make these little circles. Little circles. The more colors you put in random areas, you know, the more depth your cloud is going to have. Right? We've got all these purples and crimsons and kind of blues mixed in. We're not going to over mix them, of course. We take these ones back here and just kind of swipe them to the side. And just leave these far off clouds like that. Swipe this one to the side. I mean, you could leave it just like that if you wanted to, or you could add white. Most people think that clouds have to be white all the time. They really don't. If you go out and look at a cloud, it's not just pure white all the time. Got to have some depth in there, right? So maybe we'll take a little bit of our white on the palette knife, which you can find uh, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, or go to my happy little landscapes website, happy little landscapes.com. Find everything you need there. I'm right, going to take the slightest little bit on our straight clouds back here. And I'm only using the, the smallest amount of paint because I'm not trying to cover all of these shadows, right? We want to leave some of the sky. We want to leave some shadows in there. Come back with our brush and just very, very lightly touch it, right? We're not trying to blend it out. We're not trying to mix it. We just want to kind of disturb what it looks like, right? Pull to the side and go up and go to the side. And now you've got these just very faintly lit clouds that are way off in the distance, right? Looks really good, actually. <clears throat> now, why don't we take our Bob Ross kind of, what's this one, the half size round brush, right? Good for making trees and foliage and bushes and all sorts of stuff. We'll get that little bit of our blue kind of mixed in here, right on the edge of this, end of this brush. And I can't even speak today. It's a crazy day today. Just get the whole thing covered. Don't need a whole lot of paint though. And then we'll go off and we'll make these like far off little, just far away trees, right? Just a little bit of soft forest back here. Just like that. Come in, let me just mix these up just the smallest bit down around the bottom. Give us a little bit of fog down here. And then we can go and add some more. Just kind of mix it up back and forth. Take our liner brush into our paint thinner, just the littlest bit. And we can come up here and just make a few little indications of some, some branches on these trees back in here, right? Some of them might get covered, they might get lost, but the people that are looking for details in your painting are going to be able to see these. You know, you want to want to have your painting sell, you got to have a lot of details, right? At least that's how I think anyway. Throw some bushes back in here, a couple little sticks, twigs maybe popping out the back. <clears throat> totally up to you what you want to do. All right, come in. Make this next one a little bit darker, so we're going to need a little bit more paint on the brush. 
And we can come back, kind of pop underneath here. Just a few more little bit of bushes. We're gonna take these bushes, we're gonna pull them out to the side, right? Again, we never know what we're gonna paint with Josh. So it's a mystery between you guys and me. You're like, well, what's he gonna do next? I don't know. We're gonna put some paint on the canvas and we're gonna figure it out. Over to the edge over here, of course. We got this nice little soft little painting. Don't wanna overdo the bottom, right? We're not gonna over mix it. We wanna have some of these purples and yellows and everything else shine through there. Maybe we can put a little bit of path or some dirt or some kind of something. All right, let's get a little bit more of that dark mixture here. And let's just pull to the side a little bit. Give us a little bit of kind of distinction of this dirt that all this stuff's standing on. All right, the further we come down this way, the longer it has to be. All right, up here, be nice and short. And the further we come down, the longer it is. And that way it looks like this side is closer and that side is further away. Just very lightly. I'm going to come up here just to kind of flatten that stuff down. Just the lightest bit. Don't need a whole lot. All right now it looks like we've got this scene. This, this is our sunset kind of further away. Maybe we'll put some big trees in the front. For now, let's take that uh, the brownish color, mix it with a little bit of white, but we're not going to overmix it, of course. Not going to overmix, and that way we're going to have all these different colors when we go to lay this down, right? You got all these different colors: light brown, a little bit of white, a little bit of dark brown, just everywhere, all in there at the same time. All right, now we got this bit of dirt that lives back in here. bit of dirt. Start getting down to the bottom of these things and the, the lip of the easel gets in my way. I hate that. There we go. A little bit of dirt over here. Stick that sucker back up in there. And take some of this, just the very bottom of it, and just pull it out just so we have a little bit more color down here in the bottom. Swipe it up like that. Again, just kind of get rid of those brush strokes. We're not trying to over mix the bottom down here, right? Let's wash off this brush. You can find the uh, paint thinner that we use. Everything you need right at uh, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art or go to happy little landscapes.com. Show everybody that hasn't seen it before the old beater bucket. It's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of there. And that just helps me beat this brush clean and dry. Clean and dry, dry and clean. Today we're back in the studio this morning, guys. We got the DJ voice going. And we're going to put some highlights on these uh, far off bushes back here. To our Casey Kasem voice, right? We're going to come back. We're going to put some of these highlights on these bushes. I'm Casey Kasem. All right, let's go over here. We're just going to very lightly touch. Don't want a lot of bright highlights. Just want to have a little bit of green back in there in different places. And if you've done your job well enough, you'll have these different color greens mixed in with your white on your brush, right? Very simple. Leave the, the bottom dark. Maybe put a little bit of distinction of green back in here on these taller trees, but it's much less dull. It's much duller, <laughs> right? These ones in the front are much more bright. Wash all that off. <clears throat> this feels like it's my first video. It's, I mean, it's my first video in a while. But, uh, yeah, I like the way this one's turning out, actually. Looking pretty good. Let me take some of that dark brown. Well, the brown, dark sienna. Let's just make some of this just a little bit darker. Again, we're not covering over all of the colors underneath, right? Just try to save some of those colors. You don't want it to just be all one single color down around the bottom, or anywhere for that matter. We could throw like a little path back in here, it looks like. I want to mix up some of that yellow ochre since we have so much of it. 
and the brown. Mix some of that up. Not too much, not too mixed, right? And come back here, and just throw this little kind of thick little path, just like you're making a water line. All right, the closer down we get to us, the thicker the path is going to get. It's just going to be a little bit different color. We're going to mix a little bit of that black in there too as we get closer. A little bit different color than the browns that are underneath. That's why you always got to have these differences in color, you guys. I'm always preaching it. Differences in color. Okay? We've got this little path. It starts off small back here. And the closer it gets to us, bigger it gets, right? Take a little bit of that shadow color and just every so often drop it in and we got like little drop offs and and just distinctions in our, our path, right? Very messy though. We want it to be this messy looking path. I'm just going to very lightly go over this, just very lightly. I want it, there to be some texture want there to be the differences in color so we're not blending it all out, right? On this side we can blend out. But over here I want to have this little kind of rocky path that's sitting over there. Speaking of rocks, we can take and make up some little rocks. Just our black, blue, and crimson. Like that. Why don't we throw like a little bit of shadowy rock in just every so often. Take some of these. And again, all we're doing is just having these differences in color. All right, I'm always saying it, differences in color, guys. Let's see what that looks like over here. It's not bad, actually. And our path a little bit over there. It's looking really good. I like it. You want to be so gentle with the knife, though. Right? You push it too hard, you're going to smush everything. So be really gentle with the knife. That's the fun part about painting with Josh. What's coming next? We never know. Never, ever know. Why don't we take... We could put a little... Put a little cabin in here. All right? Everyone's always like, Oh, I, I have trouble painting cabins and stuff. So let's make a cabin. Now we're going to do that. We're going to get that same dark. Kind of come up here. Just drop in that dark color. Red, black, and blue mixed together. Just like that. Got our little bit of side over there. This one's going to have a black roof because there's obviously no snow. So we're going to put this on like that. A little bit of black shingled roof, right? You're like, Josh, that just looks like a black blob. Like, what are you doing? I know. Trust. How many times I got to say trust me? Get that white and the brown mixed up again. A little bit more white. I want to have this distinction of color. When I go in up here, pull straight down. And we look like we got these little boards. Some wooden boards. Right, over here to the side, I'm going to make that a little bit darker just because we're in the shadow over here. I'm going to have a little bit of brown, a little bit of dark. Much lighter on the front, right? Get our little roof kind of hanging off the edge. Bring the pitch down over here. And just like that, we got a little cabin. Scrape off a place for the door. Drop a little bit of that black in there for our door. Boom. Cabin central. Come over here. Angles are most important when you're making a cabin. Got to have the angles right. Some of that black in there again. Now we got this little door to our cabin. Really good, you guys. Looking really good. Take some of that black over here. We've got to make a to make the distinction from where the cabin is to what is next to it. 
sometimes you got to use the small edge of the knife just to get the right thing to fill in there. Okay, I'm going to grab that little bit of our, our cabin at the bottom and we're going to decide the angle that it lives on, right? Just like that, guys. Maybe okay, take a bit more of that. Get that white and brown. Maybe we'll have a little path that comes out of his house right down here. Again, we'll grab some more black, crimson, and blue. Mix those up. Come in with our little bush making brush, right? The little oval brush. And then let's pop some bushes down around here, around this cabin. Wash that off. Right into our liquid white. We haven't used any of these other colors yet, so let's try some of this red. All right, put a little bit of bush on the on the top there in red. And maybe we'll use the violet. Since we got it out, might as well use the violet. Take the bottom of these guys, just pull them out a little bit, just like that. Again, we can fix our path down around the bottom of these. Again, it needs to be a lot wider down here around the bottom than it did up here at the top, right? That looks really neat. What I wanted to do is have some big tall trees in this sucker. So we got our path. Let's take this and just kind of pull it out just a little bit. On our path, we can do some tall trees, throw some bushes down around the bottom. So again, for those trees, we're going to mix the brown with the black. And maybe right here, we got this, this little tall little sucker. Skinny at the top, thinner as you come down, right? Thicker. <laughs> Thicker as you come down. Maybe those two kind of mash up together. I want to leave some space where we can see this bit of kind of trail go off back in the distance back here. So I don't want to do too many. Not too many. That looks really good. I'm trying to make this one nice and quick for you guys. So if you're like, oh, Josh is all over the place. You're right. I am all over the place. I'm trying to make it fast for you guys, all right? So let's see. You come up. We'll put a couple little bits off. You really got to have a lot of paint thinner on your brush when you go to do these little branches, otherwise it's going to drag. It's not going to flow over it like you want. Maybe just like that. So go back in five, six dips into the cup with your liner brush. Maybe this guy comes across here. And then into your paint because you want it to be almost dripping off of your your little liner brush, right? We're using the Meaden micro liner brushes, which you can find at happylittlelandscapes.com. Go to my Amazon store through there, and you'll be able to find what you need. All right? Always come back. You can always take the time. Come back in and get more paint thinner into your dark mixture, right? You gotta have the thinner. Otherwise, you're gonna have these funky looking, you know, bits of the end of your branches. Everybody needs a friend, right? So we got to give this guy, give him some love. You can put as many little branches on your your trees as you'd like. Doesn't have to look like mine, right? Just remember, if you want to be small details, you got to have a lot of paint thinner on your brush. It's like a little sticky bush over here. It's turning into versus some trees, but I like it. The best part about painting with me, we never know what it's going to look like until we get done, or what it's going to be, what this is going to be, what that's going to be. Let's take this guy, maybe this guy's a little bit longer. Again, you want more 
you know, towards the end of your branches, you want them to be thinner than they are down here where you got this thick bit, right? You don't want to have all this, you know, the same size branches. They always taper off at the end. So remember that. Let's get some of this in here. Just like that, you guys, we got this real thorny little bush. Nice and quick, simple little painting. All right, anybody can paint. Just have to have the desire and a couple little little you know tools, which you can find happylittlelandscapes.com. You can find all the tools that I have, every single brush, every color, every bit of paint, the Bob Ross liquid white, the liquid clear, the liquid black, all of his colors, all the magic fly colors that we use, all at, at happylittlelandscapes.com. Go to my Amazon link through there. All right. It's looking really good. I really like the way this one looks. Okay, now how are we going to finish off the bottom, right? You gotta, I mean, you could leave it like this if you wanted to. You really could, but I don't like to. I always like to have tons and tons of details in my paintings. So we're going to use up the last of that. Let's get some of that green in there. The blue, black, and crimson. Throw some of our green in. Throw some of the yellow ochre in there too, just to give it a different flavor, right? Different flavor. But you want it to be dark. You want this, this paint to be dark and super thick. We're going to dab it in, and you can see as we pull away all these little drag marks, right? It's because the brush is so thick, full of paint. So we come in, and as we push in, you want to see all of these details on the on the canvas, right? Want it to be nice and thick, and that way when we come back with our highlight color, it's gonna stick to those thick areas, fill in all those little gaps and divots that this brush is making. Just like that. You can go as high as you want, you can be as small as you want, whatever you want to do, just make it look prospectively correct to your scene. Wash off all that goopy thick paint. Bob Ross always said a thin paint will stick to a thick paint, right? So start thick and then go thin. Let's get a little bit of this over here just to just to make a distinction from the front of the cabin to the side. In order to thin our paints down, you've got to use this liquid white. Or you could use paint thinner if you wanted to keep it a real dark color. The liquid white makes it, you know, it brightens up your, your highlight colors. Right. We're going to come back and just very lightly touch in different places, but we're not going to cover all the dark. Otherwise, what was the point of putting all the dark in there? Let's get some of this yellow ochre in here too. Leaving dark spaces in between you know, your different colors. And that's going to give you a lot of depth. Got to have depth in your painting. There's no bush that's just all one color all the time, right? Look at that fiery spit of red. Love that. It's never just one color. Or even if it's, you know, a red bush, it's never the same color red. There's darker reds, there's lighter reds, all sorts of stuff in there. A little bit more red down in here. It's really nice. And that's it, guys. Just within a few minutes, we created this whole, whole little scene. How long have we been filming? About 30 minutes. It's not bad at all. A few minutes, whole little scene. Taught you how to paint a cabin, how to do this yellow and brown sky, which I'm sure you've never tried before. And that's the fun bit about painting to me, is trying something new, right? Trying something new and, and beating the devil out of it. That's the best part. I use that bucket to help keep my house clean versus Bob. He just sprays it all over the studio he was at. Let's see. Okay, we're going to take ours. We're going to sign it right down here. This painting will be available on Etsy. You can either go through my Etsy store or you can go through my website, happylandscapes.com. That will take you to the Etsy store. There's a link there. little 
little bit, put our family of birds up in here, just sort of far off in the distance. Me, my wife, and my daughter. Go into every single painting that I do. Just like that, guys, we got a finished piece. Again, you can find this painting at happyvillelandscapes.com or etsy.com slash shop slash happyvillelandscapes. We had a whole lot of fun showing you how to paint a painting like this. Nice and easy. Got this path that kind of leads off into nothing back there. Big old tree up in the front. It's just, it was a, it was real fun. A whole lot of fun showing you guys how to do this. So, uh, I'd like to thank you guys. We're going live on Sunday. Every Sunday we go live. And um, it's on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. I can't go Amazon Live on Sundays, that's why I'm showing you guys today. I just don't have enough <laughs> devices, I can't get them to go everywhere. So hope you guys check out my Facebook, uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash happylandscapeart, or again, go to happylittlelandscapes.com and you can find links to everywhere that I am. Well guys, we did it, 12 by 12 inch canvas, little cabin, far off, kind of, you know, fall, autumn type setting bunch of thick trees in the back, got this bare tree in the front, used a bunch of brown, bunch of uh, yellow in the sky, which you probably never tried. So if you want to try this painting, uh, check out the details, get all the colors you need out, go to my uh, Amazon shop through my, my website, uh, happylittlelandscapes.com. You can find all the things you need to be able to paint a painting just like this, from the easel to the canvas to all the colors, the brushes, the cleaning solution, everything we need, amazon.com slash shop slash happylandscapeart, okay? I want to thank you guys for staying with me, and uh, we'll catch you on the next painting. Bye.